Okay. All right. So this is our goal, right? The fish. We're gonna let me get the paper passed out first. We're going to do the grid method again with the fish to get proportions correct. And I'm also going to be giving you a smaller sheet because you'll want to test your paints and your brushes before you put it on your paper, like your piece. Um, because once watercolor is there, it's there. all have rulers and pencils on your table. All right, we're going to start by making the grid on the picture of your fish on the little print piece. Okay, and we're going to measure this to be five by six. It's a little longer this way than five, so we're going to start at the top. Make sure it's on inches, measure down to five and put a dot at the bottom. So putting a dot at five on this side and then going over to the other side and putting a dot on the five there as well. Okay, and then you're going to draw a straight line across. And this bottom line here is going to be the bottom of your picture. You're going to pretend that anything underneath that is not actually there. Okay, so you should have that bottom line going across the bottom of your paper looking like that. Okay, does everyone have that done? Does anyone need help? Okay, now that we have our five inch mark, we're going to make dots at the two and a half inch mark. That would be the middle. Also one at one and one quarter. And one at three and three quarters. Do I need to write those down or do you have them? Do you want me to write them down? You need help? And then you're going to do that on the other side as well. 
You should have four lines total. You're going to measure it. It's six wide, so measure it at three and get your middle line. Okay, so right smack in the middle should be three. So you'll put your three inch mark at the top and three inch mark at the bottom and then connect the lines. Does anyone need help with that? Let me check. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Actually, three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Sorry, guys. I should have measured before I spoke. It's three and a quarter, Annalyn. Three and one quarter. Yeah, it is. You just have to put the zero on the blue. Yeah, start the zero on the blue part. <laughs> Alright, so does everyone's look like this? With the Oh, like the 
So we still got to do it on our watercolor paper. I'm sorry, did you have it finished? Mm -hmm. yeah, we still got to do the three lines. Well. No, we don't have to do it. That should be plenty for you to get the, the proportions correct. Okay? <laughs> because this is important for you to learn. Okay. Huh? No, we're going to keep it just like this. All right? So everyone look up at the screen, and, and yours looks like this, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So now get your piece of watercolor paper. Okay. And you need to feel of the watercolor paper. Oh, I'm sorry. You need to feel of the watercolor paper. There's two sides. There's a side that has a tooth. And then there's a smooth side. We're going to work on the side that has the tooth, that has that rough feeling. Okay? So that's the side we're going to be drawing on. Remember that these pencil lines are not going to be part of our finished piece. So we have to draw them how? Light. Light. Yes. Draw them light. Okay, so we're going to start with our middle line. This paper is... 12 inches. Okay, so we're going to make our middle line at 6 inches. We're going to put a middle mark at the top and at the bottom. You need to make it very light. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Just as long as you have two dots to connect to make your line straight. Okay, so now your paper should look like this with a line right down the middle. Okay, you got it? Okay, who does not have it? Okay, are we ready to move on? Yeah. Okay. So the height of this paper is nine inches. What's half of nine? Three. Three. No. Four and a half. Four and a half. So we're gonna put our first mark at four and a half. Okay, what's half of four and a half? Let's get some math brains going. Two, two, two and a half. Four and a half, two and a quarter. There you go, Aiden. Good job. Two and a quarter. <laughs> okay, so what's what's four and a half plus two and a quarter? Four and a half plus two and a quarter. Good job, Aiden. Six and three quarters. All right, so I'm going to write these down. What was the first one? Two, 
two and a quarter. Four and a half and six and three quarters. Those are your three marks. <laughs> See, there is math involved in art, right? There's math involved in everything. Yes, there is. All right, so two and a quarter, four and a half, six and three quarters. And then you're going to connect those lines. Okay, so now your paper should look like this. Okay. You should have eight rectangles. Right there, I wrote them on the board. Do you need me to help you? All right. a little bit so that they're not so dark. You still want to see them, but you don't want them that dark. Okay, once you get finished with that, we'll be ready to start sketching. Wait, what was the bottom line? Six and three quarters. Girl, what are you trying to do? I didn't do that. You did that before you. Yes, be careful, especially when we start painting. I have had people spill water on other people's paintings, and that can be really frustrating. So when we get to painting, be aware of your surroundings. All right, are we ready to start sketching? No? Okay, I'll give you, you have one more minute to erase your lines. They're too dark. These are fine. Okay, we're going to start sketching. We're going to be doing an outline drawing. We are not drawing details. We are only drawing the outline. 
Okay, so we're going to start up here. We're going to start up here in this section here because it has the least amount in it and only has this little part of the fish, the top part. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and draw that line. You don't have any on yours? What, whatever you, let's look at it. So you're going to start saw sawing. You're going to start drawing what you see in each box. Dakota, did you say you wish it was just drawn on there already? <laughs> And remember, you're going to draw these very light because pencil drawing is not going to be included in our finished piece. Alright guys, can you see this? This is what we're looking for, the outline drawing. Okay, we're not looking for details at all. All we are looking for is outlines, okay? Only outlines. That's all that that's all the pencil drawing that you need right there. Does anyone need help? Oh. Yes, you like that. Like, Were you trying to do it for me? No, I'm like <laughs> doing it the exact same size. I'm not. Oh, oh yes. dang it. <laughs> yes, continue on to your boxes. Any box? Uh, you can. It would be best to do a connecting box. Okay. Yeah. 
Every time I'm drawn it to mouth, it looks like <laughs> <laughs> I saw it in the middle. So bad. Well, the mouth, yes, it has a huge bottom lip, so it looks kind of tough and sweet. I like how everybody goes to the face of it. I need this to look at Once you have your outline drawn, you can start erasing the grid lines. Mine is really fat. Unless I get too many chicken nuggets. Yeah, he had a few too many uh, shrimp or something. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, once Whoa. you have once you have your grid lines erased, you should just have a very light uh, outline of your fish. Look at 
It's like so small and it's like massive. It's like Nemo. Nemo. I'm talking about the finding no one. on this piece of paper before we actually put it on our piece that we're going to work on. Okay, we're going to talk about this type of watercolor. Has anyone used tube watercolor before? Who, who has not? Okay, several of you have not. This is very, very potent in its pigment, okay? It doesn't take a whole lot. That's why you have such a small amount on your trays. Okay, so the way that we're going to use this is I'm gonna, we're going to start with a wash brush. A wash brush is one like this. It's kind of fat. Okay, you're going to, you're going to dip your wash brush into the water and then take the excess off on the cup like this so it's not dripping onto the table or your paper. Before you dip it in the paint, don't dip it in the paint yet. 
it takes a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of paint. Okay, so I'm going to use the red here, and I'm just going to brush it along the side like this, just a tiny bit. Work it into the tip of the brush. It doesn't need to go beyond the tip. Okay, and then I'm going, if I'm doing a wash, I can make a straight line across like this so that it looks like that. And I can dip my brush back into my water, wet it just a little bit, and then I can pull that down and make a gradient wash. A gradient, that means it goes from dark to light. Okay, do you see how it goes from darker to light? Yes, I'm sorry. On paper, it will bend up. Okay. Has everybody got that? All right. Let's do a different type of wash. Okay, a different type of wash would be filling in an area. I'm going to draw a circle on my paper. So just draw a circle on your paper. It doesn't have to be very big. Rinse your brush out, get it clean. Okay, and then wipe the excess off on the side of the cup. And then you're going to put water, just straight water, inside your circle. Exactly. Okay. Yes, you need a different brush than that. Not, don't use the wooden handle brushes. No, yours is fine. Okay, so now that you have water inside of your circle, um, I'm going to use blue. Again, you're going to use, just go to the, the corner here and get a tiny bit on the end of your brush. And you can kind of dab up here if you have too much. And then I'm going to put that blue inside of where I put my water. And you get a completely different effect. Okay, so those are the two different types of wash techniques that we're going to be using on this fish. Okay, so keep this big brush. Go ahead and clean it and put it off to the side. That's the big brush that you're going to use for your wash. Okay, and now you're going to get a medium-sized round brush like this one. A medium size, not the tiny ones. That's good, Anna Lynn. Yeah, that one will be fine. Okay. So we're going to do some practice lines with this medium brush. We're going to start by dipping it in the water. Uh oh, grab another one. Grab another one. Okay, and I'm going to use green again. I'm just going to the side here to pick up a tiny bit of paint. You might have to work it a little bit until it's smooth. This is more of a you can use it as a smaller wash or a detail. Okay, so we're going to practice just drawing lines, and our lines are going to start thick and end thin. So you're going to put a little more pressure down at the beginning, and then you're going to 
pull up the pressure so you end up with a line like that. Can you see that? I might need to make it a little darker. I'll do it with the blue. It's a little darker. You're going to put pressure on it at first and then get lighter by decreasing the pressure. Okay, so you see how it goes from thick to thin? Practice doing that a couple of times. And you can you can get it really small and as you get down into your smaller section it's also going to get lighter. Okay, practice that for just a few more seconds. See if you can make it um, a little thinner at the end by putting less pressure. What kind of brush are you using? turning blue. Oh, your water, that's fine. try mixing colors because we are going to have to mix a little bit. Um, we're going to have to make purple out of what two colors make purple? Blue and red. Blue and red. Good. All right. So watch up here so I can show you how to mix the colors. You're going to dip your brush in, pull up some blue, put it up here in a separate part, then grab a little bit of red from the side and then pull it together. If you need a little more red, pull it in. All right. There we go. Mine took quite a bit of red to get purple. This is a this is a really dark blue. Okay. Yes, it is like a plum. Okay. All right. Now you're going to have a lot of purple mixed onto your brush. Okay, so before you put it on your paper, you want to rinse your brush. Yes, you can. Okay, so let's use that purple and we're going to do so, um, some circular type strokes. Make sure that you've rinsed your brush so you don't have too much. And the circular types are going to be just making little circles like this so that you get a different type of wash. Okay. Okay. 
All right, do you kind of feel like you have the, the feel of the paint and the paintbrushes? Yes. All right, are you ready to start on the fish? Yes. <laughs> Maybe? Yes. 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 We are sure. All right. <laughs> All right, if you look at the fish, we're going to start with base colors, okay? This is a finish, so there's, there's different layers on here. We're going to start with the underwash. If you look at this section of the fish, what color is that underwash? Red. Red. If you look at this side, what color is the underwash? Yellow. A yellow. Okay, so we're going to start with the red here. And for this one... I'm going to let you choose. To, you can use your bigger brush or your smaller brush. I'm going to use my bigger brush because it's a little faster. And I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of red on my brush. And before I paint, I'm going to test it to make sure that it is how I want it. For me, hmm, that might be a little too dark, a little darker than I want it. So I'm going to add a little water to my brush, and when I get it how I want it, then I'm going to put it on my paper. The darkest part of this fish is also his gill, so start at the bottom and work your way up. And, and don't add paint to your brush after you do your bottom, only add water so that it gets lighter as you go up. Yes, paint around the eyeball. Um, you're going to try to make it darkest at the bottom, and then as you work your way up, you are only adding water to your brush. No, that's fine. And don't work it onto the paper too much or your paper will start to disintegrate. So if you get it too wet, just stop painting and let it dry, okay? So your red part should look something like this. Whoa. Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> Mine is dripping. <laughs> <laughs> it has the thumb hole and everything. It should actually be lighter around the eye. Oh. oh my goodness! The bottom is like way too dark. Add water. You can. You mean uh, backwards towards the end? Um, you can work it all the way back. It doesn't matter. We're going to put yellow on it too. So, don't, but you don't want it to be dark in the back as far as your red goes.
Okay, after you have your red, then you can do the yellow on the back. Yellow on the back. And this is going to, you're going to use that darker yellow. You have two yellows. You kind of have a mustard yellow and a brighter yellow. This is going to be um, the darker yellow. Again, before you do the yellow, test it on your, on your paper to make sure it's how you want it. Hmm? The darker yellow. Uh -huh. It's going to be, it's going to go on the back side of the fish. <laughs> it's not actual mustard. Like I'm looking up there for this picture. I know, me too. I'm just like, wait. All right, Aiden, you want to add a little water to yours? All right, we're going to move on to the fin, to the tail, I'm sorry, to the tail. What color is the base color of the tail? Purple. That plum color that we made. Okay, so we're going to use that. You're going to switch to your smaller brush and be sure to test it on your spare paper to make sure you like it and that it's light. You want this one, this needs to be light, not the darker purple. And we're just going to fill in that whole area of the, the back tail. Tail. Okay, the, the tail. That's the back end of the fish. <laughs> okay, and after you do that, you're going to fill in the fins with whatever base color that they need. The top fin is probably yellow. And you can use the, the brighter yellow for this one. Uh huh? The little pears on the Is it coming? Let me get you a different one. Can you take them out and lay them flat Purple got mixed with my yellow and I'm turning green. <laughs> okay. Dab it with paper towel. You see how there's yellow underneath the other side? 
No, it's fine. You need more red? Hold on just one second and I'll get you some. Yes, I'm doing the top fin right now. It just needs to be yellow. There's, do you see the little bit of yellow underneath the red? <laughs> All right, you need red, is that what you said? And these bottom two fins, one needs to be green, one needs to be blue. Uh, do the top fin first in yellow. No, do not add red yet. Go to the bottom fins. Okay, once you have your your base colors down, your fish should look something like this. So colorful. Very colorful. It doesn't look any. Oh. It's so rainbowy. I mean, it's like that. It's so beautiful. All right, I'm going to give you five minutes to finish your base colors because we have about 25 or 30 minutes left in class. No, we don't have time for snacks today. Isn't that awful? Yes. There are no chips left. They are all gone. <laughs> Does anyone need any help? You're all good? <laughs> That's true. That is true. Okay, so so finish up, finish up with your 
with your base colors because it needs to dry for a couple of minutes before we move on. So if you have yours done already, take your scrap piece of paper and just begin to dry it. And be careful not to knock over water or brushes. You tested your colors on it. Yeah, I've been texting my colors and like this fish just showed up. You can use water to blend them together. Just only use it right where they where they need to blend. What, you want to do it alone? Okay, are you guys ready? No. No? no? You don't all right the next step we're going to start with the dark shadow area at the bottom of the fish so if you look, we have a dark purple down here, and we have blues and dark reds here. Okay, that's the area that we're going to work on right now. So I'm going to use my medium-sized brush, and I want my purple to be, oops, I'm not working on that one. I need my purple to be pretty dark, so I'm not going to dip my brush into the water first this time. I'm going to just pick it directly up from the tray. This is really stiff. Try this one. Um, paint brushes, when you get done with them, uh, lay them flat, okay? And make sure that they are they are tipped up when you put them back into the buckets. I want to tell Okay, so we're going to the purple. We're going to pick it up straight from the tray. Are you ready to be bold? Yes. Okay, and so we're going to start putting in that shadow area down here at the bottom. Wait, where the red is? Um, on the belly of the fish. Okay, and so your shadow should look something like that. Some more red. I can make more purple instead. Can we put the rest of the purple that's like on the top? If you feel confident in, in doing the other areas of purple, you can go ahead and start doing those too. Um, you need that darker purple blue color at the top of the fish on the, I'm sorry, on the tail. Yes. Mm -hmm. I need some more red. Some more red? If you if your painting is looking kind of dry, keep adding water to your brush. Okay, you don't need to put it in the paint anymore, you just need to straight in the water to your brush. See how it's
Um, yes. The bottom lip has purple and blue. So we're just filling in those shadow areas. Yes, when you wherever you begin to see those shadow areas and the and the colors that they are, just start filling it in. Yep, start adding those in. And if you need your purple to be a little bit darker, there's a brown. Um, so you can use that brown to darken it just a little bit. Like over here on the tail, I want it to be a little darker, so I'm going to. Yes. And you see the cheek area of the fish is darker too, so you can begin adding that in. Oh. Pick up your papers. Dots are going to be really light, so you might want to test it on your paper. how I'm, I'm doing the gills to start with. A big blotch of red paint. Okay. And I know it looks kind of funny to start with, but you're going to let that dry and then you're going to blend it and it's going to, it'll look, it'll look good. So I'm letting this area of the gill that I did dry and now I'm using only water I'm going to I'm going to soften the edges with only using water Okay so it looks more like that We need paint what color Need 
Okay, and now I'm going in and I'm beginning to add that the darker mustard colors. Okay, so now I'm adding the darker mustard color to get my uh, shading on the back side. Okay, and now I've added the red to the top of the fin. Is anyone stuck and needing some help? Can you start over? Can I start? <laughs> and now I'm going to go down to the bottom fins and begin adding the shading and lines that I see there. Okay, after adding the shading and lines to the fins. All right. Now I'm going to start adding in the the dots of of the fish, the markings on it. Wait, what is this color next to the yellow on the top? Which one? Uh, I thought it was purple. You just made us make a Okay, once you start adding in the dots of the fish, then you kind of see them begin to come alive. Okay, 
Kind of put the brush down like that. Okay, so I've got my dots added. I'm going to show you, well, something like that. We're going to do, remember how we put the water down first? Yeah. That's how you do the background. So you're going to paint around the fish with the water. And you can use your big brush. And do sections at a time. Don't do the whole area. Like, I'm just going to work on this uh, top right section first and add in some blue and then you'll see how it spreads as I put it down I'm sorry up here it spreads so just kind of dabbing but you don't want to dab close to your fish or it will spread onto your fish so keep it away from your fish Okay, so your background is going to look something like this. Huh? What's the green stuff in the water? It's it's algae. Ew. I'll do that first. I'll do the other side. I'll do the second. We just caught the mother girl voice in the end. I'll do the four box. Wait, can you say that with the mother girl voice? Yeah. Sorry. You guys have a voice. Yep. And you'll want to leave the, the uh, top brighter than the bottom um, because water at the bottom is darker than at the top so leave some some lighter areas at your top mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, does anyone want to like use that? Okay, now do this. Keep using your big brush. So now just begin to. And don't lift it up horribly. Okay, almost. Now 
that just came all around? Yep, in circles, circular motions. All right, for the eye, I'm going to use a small brush, a detail brush. And the outline of the eye is red. So I'm going to start with that. And there's a little bit of mustard in there. It's not a two-year-old painting. It's a two-year-old. It's a fourteen-year-old painting. Work only using water. Work the blue carefully up to your fish so it doesn't have a white outline around it. And I'm speedily rushing through, but this is what I have right now. Just to justify how bad it is, it's like, oh man, I'll just speed through it. So, <laughs> so good. But the, the finishing touches is with the finishing touch is with the small brush. And if you look up here, I'm going to use my small brush and out put a very small outline around the entire fish and then also there's some lines right here representing the gills and I'm going to do that with the brown too um, with a very very small brush and you'll want your brown to be pretty dark when you're doing it Wait, what color do we outline brown So here is the fish finished. If I had more time, I could I could finish adding in the details like with this one. Um, this one is just adding, it's going back over those shadow areas and making them darker as the paint continues to dry. So that's the that's the final step. 